everyone, this is Denise Lawrence here, week two of our four-week series on unforgettable open houses. Open houses are successful if you plan for them. So I, today what I want to do is spend a little time talking about how you can plan to have a successful open house and how your planning can help bring more people to your open house, therefore giving you a better opportunity of possibly selling the house or finding new leads in your business. So first of all, to have a successful open house, you have to plan well. The most important decision you need to make when you're thinking about doing an open house is where is this open house going to be? What is the price range of this open house? Is this an open house that is in high demand? Is this a type of home that people are actually looking for? I hear so many agents out there that go and spend their precious time on a weekend holding open houses only to say nobody showed up. Now if nobody showed up and you've done all your marketing and promotion, that's one thing. But if nobody shows up because you picked the wrong open house in the first place, then that's your mistake. Choosing the right home open house is imperative. So for example, go into the MLS and find out what houses are selling right now. Look for recent pendings. Look for the trends. Look for the neighborhoods that are hot. Look for the price points that are hot. Look for the style of homes that is hot. So the first thing you want to do is choose the right open house. The second thing you have to do is you have to plan for that open house by figuring out how you're going to attract people to come to that open house. Attraction is all about promotion in terms of online and offline. How are you going to advertise that open house? Where are you going to put it online? Are you putting it on your website? Are you talking about it in your blog? Are you sending out any invitations? The other thing is to get people to come to your open house, you've got to find them. And finding them is knowing who is most likely going to maybe possibly buy that particular home that you're holding open. So what that looks like is go and have a look at the price point of the open house that you are holding open. Let's say it's a $300,000 open house. Ask the question, where are the buyers of this open house most likely going to live? What is the price point that they most likely live in now? So let's imagine your open house is a $300,000 open house and you might say, you know, probably somebody living in a $200,000 version of the house that I've got held open right now is probably a good candidate because they do say that people don't move too far from where they currently live. So find a neighborhood that's similar or a house or houses that are similar in a, probably about a two to three mile rate, you know, ratio of that open house. So now what you've done is you've located move up buyers but also then think about move down buyers. Where are the buyers that are most likely going to possibly move down to this property? So you've got to locate potential clients by finding out the target markets and where those individuals might live. The next thing you need to do, and I would not ever hold an open house if I did not have a neighbors only open house hour prior to that open house. So the planning for that's very simple. You've got to send a letter out to the neighbors let them know who you are, let them know about the open house, and then invite them to that special hour beforehand. You also have to think about the neighbors in terms of having a great first impression. And a great way for you to do that is to send them a letter. And the letter basically says, hi, my name is Denise Lonis. Uh, I just want to let you know that this weekend I'm going to be holding an open house at your neighbor Mary Smith's home. During that time, I'm anticipating that there's probably going to be more traffic in the neighborhood during that time. So if you have small children or pets, I would be happy to also put up a slow down sign in front of your property so that you don't have to worry about traffic or the speed of traffic and the extra traffic in your neighborhood. Now I will tell you that neighbors will call you and thank you for this nice gesture. Also, let's imagine they didn't call you, but they see you there at the open house. They are far more likely to make sure that they come out and say hi. Or maybe it's also a great way to encourage them to drop by that special hour before the open house. The other thing that you need to think about is, okay, how am I going to make this open house special when people arrive? First of all, first and foremost at an open house is signage. Agents don't do anything with signage other than put up one or two A-board signs. And that's not effective signage. You've got to use multiple signs. If you don't know where to put your signs, you may have to ask the homeowner if they've got a neighbor in the neighborhood that doesn't mind signage being on their property. You've got to find a way to get extra signage there. Also make sure that the signage is strategically located at busy traffic points. You've got to make sure that you have thought about all of that. Extra signage is imperative. 
When I held open houses, I would not even think about holding an open house if I didn't have seven or eight signage boards, uh, whether that's a board or whether that is, uh, you know, regular signage that you're just going to put in some, on someone's property or on the corner. The, the most important thing is it's really important to think about signage. Also, you have to think about preparing the open house for when people arrive. For example, are you going to have any kind of drinks or any kind of snacks? And I say absolutely. Make sure that you have snacks at the house, and that could be something as simple as uh, for some people they like crackers, other people like chips, some people like uh, protein bars, some people need to have uh, some form of, uh, could be cheese and crackers, but you've got to have something that's a snack item for people because when they're out shopping for homes, it gets tiring. Make sure you've got water. Maybe you have a bottle of coffee. Maybe you've got juice or pop, but you need to have some snacks available. Not that they're going to sit and break bread with you for half an hour, but it's important that you've got something to leave them with because it's a nice gesture. You also need to think about, okay, when somebody's inside the home, what is going to make them stay longer? So I wouldn't do an open house if I didn't have open house boards. And open house boards are basically a visual display that has been put in the house by you to slow the client down. Buyers and sellers, when they go through open houses, usually they go in very, very quickly. You need something visual that answers a lot of their questions. For example, the, one of your open house boards could talk about the area. It could talk about amenities in the area. Uh, it could talk a little bit about um, the surrounding uh, features of that neighborhood. You also need to think about the market and let them see visually what's going on in the market. So having some nice open house boards that visually convey to the buyer and seller what's going on in the neighborhood, what this neighborhood is about, who you are, what you're about is very important. I also really encourage agents to have slow down signage in the house. Slow down signage is where you're basically just pointing out special features. You know everybody knows when they look at a stove that it's a stove but what about if it's a special maybe it's a beautiful wolf range and it's a eight burner and it's got some special feature make sure that you put those details there not every fireplace is the same make sure that you expand on these different features in the home you can use literally a table tent card to, to showcase those features or you can use something that you can then put on perhaps maybe you want to put it on the outside of the microwave maybe the microwave has got something special you want to talk about well then make sure you use that special adhesive that doesn't leave marks but that way what you've done is you have taken the, the time and used the opportunity of slowing people down in the house so that's very very important also make sure that you prepare your open house books before you go to the open house. An open house book is something that you're going to give potential buyers and sellers before they leave the home that lets them know all the other inventory in the surrounding area that's also on the market. That way as they leave you can simply say to them, I just thought you might find this helpful. You'll find all of the other inventory so you can feel free to drive around, have a look at those homes and if you need to get in one of them feel free to call me back. It's a way for you again to be making a strong impression and just showing those potential clients that you do things at a totally different level. You know planning and preparing for the open house is absolutely critical. This week we are really excited because the tool this week is that letter I talked about. It's a letter that you send out to the surrounding homeowners by your open house that offers you to send and to create for them signage that says slow down. So it's a really nice tool. Just take our letter, use our letter, and look forward next week. We're doing our series next week, week three. We're really excited about it. Part three of the four-part series on unforgettable open houses. And think about, before you do your open house, doing the planning. If you plan well, people will show up. If people will show up, you will engage well, and you can get extra business. So if you want to make your open house unforgettable, you cannot forget the planning stage of the open house. Thanks. Until next week, take care and get out there.